We all know that on the 6th of August 1945, for the very first time, an atomic bomb was used on civilians. This was the most powerful and deadly weapon that was used against a country. You already know that this is the bomb that they dropped on Hiroshima in World War II. This bomb had a blast radius of about one and a half kilometers and it basically turned everything to dust. At that time, it was the most powerful weapon in history, but it kept that name for a very short period of time because seven years later, in the year 1952, the hydrogen bomb is tested. If you want to know the true power of an H-bomb, you can compare it to an atomic bomb like this. If the Hiroshima bomb destroyed one and a half kilometers of radius, the hydrogen has 10 times the power, so about 15 kilometer radius. So what's the difference between these two that makes it so different from one another? The Hiroshima bomb had a power of 15,000 tons of TNT, and they called that a 15 kiloton bomb. But seven years later, when the first hydrogen bomb was tested, it had a power of 10 million tons of TNT. And they call that the 10 megaton nuclear bomb. Since we're here, we should tell you about the most powerful hydrogen bomb in history as well. It's called the Sar Bamba, and it has a power of 50 megatons. The class of these hydrogen weapons are called thermonuclear weapons and they're the most powerful bombs in the world. So what's the difference between hydrogen and atomic bomb? An atomic bomb is extremely powerful and it basically gets its power from fission where the neutrons hit each other and cause fission. But in the hydrogen bomb case, the atoms fuse together and cause fusion. And this is the same process that happens in the core of a star. With the help of two isotopes that come from hydrogen by the name of deuterium and tritium, they fuse together and release helium. When these two fuse together, they create an unbelievable amount of energy. Deuterium is basically a hydrogen atom that carries a neutron. The hydrogen atom is the simplest atom in the world because it only has one proton and one electron, but deuterium has the neutron in the nucleus. Tritium is another isotope of hydrogen, but it's not as simple to get as deuterium. Scientists basically mix lithium and deuterium together to get tritium. We have to explain all this because this is the reason this bomb is called the hydrogen bomb. And that's because the main power source comes from different isotopes of hydrogen. And scientists did something for it to have the power. Let's continue. Deuterium and tritrium fuse together and create an unbelievable amount of energy. But the question is here. Both of these nuclei has a positive proton and two positive protons do not like to fuse together and they're like a same pole of a magnet but in a hydrogen bond they fuse together. So how do these two actually fuse together? That's with the help of an insane amount of heat. The higher the temperature gets in an environment, the faster the atoms move in that environment. And in this case, we have to raise the temperature to about 100 million degrees centigrade. It's very easy to say that number, but that's an absurd amount of heat. The core of our sun with that much heat has a temperature of about 15 million degrees Celsius. When you reach this temperature, the atoms turn into plasma and they're not as organized as they used to be. The atoms basically let go of their electrons and they form an extremely hot soup. And it's all because of this heat 
that allows the two nuclei to fuse together and cause fusion. This is where the power of the hydrogen bomb comes from. Since we understood this, we have to figure out how such temperature is created inside the H-bomb. Let's take a look at inside of a hydrogen bomb. You could basically say that inside a hydrogen bomb, there are three different bombs inside it. Up top, it's the old-fashioned atomic bomb, the one that was used on Hiroshima, and it has a normal chemical bomb wrapped around the core, which is basically the trigger. And at the bottom, you have the hydrogen fuel that causes that massive explosion. It's good to know that the yellow stuff you're seeing inside the bomb is made up of styrofoam, and the skin of the bomb is made out of beryllium, which is number four on the periodic table. And to continue further, the core of the atomic bomb is made up of plutonium-239 or uranium-235, it's just based on the manufacture. So how does it explode? First of all, that chemical normal bomb that's wrapped around the core explodes. This explosion causes that core to pressurize that's made out of plutonium or uranium and that causes fission and the atomic bomb explodes. This explosion causes a lot of neutrons to flow outward and this is where the beryllium case is very important. This material doesn't let the neutrons to exit the casing so it deflects off the walls and goes towards the hydrogen fuel at the bottom. This is all moving at a speed of light, but the blast radius is not moving that quick. And this is very important for the bomb. It has to happen so fast that not even one second can go by. The reason the neutrons has to reach the fuel before the shock wave is that if the shock wave reaches first, the bomb is basically ruined and the true potential of the hydrogen fuel is not used anymore. But the neutrons get there in time to help cook the environment and create that heat we need. And this is when the hydrogen isotopes that needed the heat fuse together and cause that nuclear fusion we were talking about. This fusion causes an insane amount of energy. All these things we told you that took about seven to eight minutes all happen in 600 nanoseconds. A nanosecond is one billionth of a second. So it's extremely a short amount of time. This bomb we explained to you guys needed about 140 kilograms of hydrogen fuel. But the technology is not that simple where any country could create it. Right now there are only six countries that have the hydrogen bomb. And that's China, India, Russia, France, United Kingdom, and the US. And for Israel and North Korea, they don't know if they have it or not. What are your guys' thoughts? Why do humans create such weapons? But when you look at it from another side, it's actually quite useful. If you've seen our video, if the atomic bomb was never invented, in that clip we explained what would happen if the atomic bomb was never invented.